Hello everyone, in this lecture I am going to give you a brief description on very important topic that is abortion. So here we will discuss what is abortion, what is its definition, what all clinical varieties or the types or you can say the classification is there and what all causes are there that can lead into the miscarriages. So before we start with this topic, as far as the pregnancy is concerned, it is very important for every individual woman that once she get pregnant, she must continue her pregnancy till term. So it is very important for them because if it get aborted earlier, then it can create a psychological impact on them. So not even this, it is very important for exam point of view as well for all the students. So keep watching this video till end and don't forget to comment your queries in comment box. So let's begin with the session. What is abortion? That is expulsion and extraction of fetus and embryo. Expulsion means spontaneously it can come out or extraction means we are deliberately uh, using the tool that make the fetus or embryo to come out. So expulsion or extraction of fetus or embryo okay before 20 week of gestation why we are mentioning the week because before these weeks 20 week of gestation the fetus or embryo is not capable to survive independently so there should be a less than 20 week of gestation when the fetus or embryo weighing less than 500 gram okay so this is the abortion that can be happen spontaneously or can be done uh, deliberately intentionally so in incidence the abortion is most likely to happen during first trimester of pregnancy uh, when it is less than 12 week of gestation it is most likely and in majority of condition again in first trimester it is most likely to be happened before eight week of gestation okay so earlier pregnancy loss is more often in comparison to the second trimester pregnancy loss okay so when there is a earlier pregnancy loss it is said that uh, the fetus or the embryo can be come out in form of blighted ova so what is the blighted ova it is just a gestational sac that can be visualized by ultrasound scan but there is an absent fetal pole as well as the cardiac activity so there is uh, when we are doing histological examination, we don't find, uh, found any uh, fetal tissues, okay, any embryonic tissues, only gestational sac we can find out, okay. So, in earlier pregnancy loss, it is just expel out or uh, extract in form of blighted ova, okay. So, this term is usually used uh, in the earlier pregnancy loss. Now, what are the clinical varieties or types are there? So as I mentioned in the definition, there is an expulsion and extraction of fetus or embryo. Why we are saying fetus and embryo? Because embryo, the term is used when the concept is about from fertilization till eight week of gestation. So in between the concept is usually being called as embryo and after that it is being called as fetus. So uh, as we know the abortion could take place uh, before 20 week of decision so it can be embryo or it can be fetus so as i mentioned in the definition that there is an expulsion or extraction of fetus and embryo so expulsion means it is automatically comes out uh, without any certain reasons and uh, extraction means we are deliberately inducing or deliberately uh, trying to uh, make the fetus and embryo to come out okay so when automatically it comes out it is called as spontaneous first, first the type is this spontaneous okay means automatic expulsion of the fetus and embryo and the second is induced extraction means induced deliberately you are doing okay intentionally you are performing so there are basically two types spontaneous expulsion and induced extraction yes now spontaneously in spontaneous there are again two division when abortion is going to be take place in a single attempt only one time miscarriage is going to be happen then it is called as isolated and the other is the recurrent or the habitual where the 
consecutive loss is more than three times. Where in continuous pregnancy, uh, in three or more than that time, the pregnancy is going to be lost. It is called as recurrent or habitual abortion. So these are the varieties in the spontaneous. Sometimes miscarriage word is also being used for spontaneous abortion. And in induced, again, it is also being classified into two. One is legal and the illegal. Legal method where medical practitioners use a certain criteria to terminate the pregnancy. In certain circumstances only, the pregnancy get terminated. So that we'll discuss in another video. That is MTP, the medical termination of pregnancy. Uh, that comes under legal termination of pregnancy. So that we'll discuss later. So legal means MTP, which is quite safe. And the other variety is illegal, which is unsafe. Because there are untrained person who uses unhygienic condition to terminate the pregnancy. Maybe they use hazardous equipment or maybe they give blunt trauma directly to the abdomen to terminate the pregnancy. So there are unsafe means. So when this type of technique is used, is being used, then what happened? Sepsis could be taken place with this abortion. So septic abortion means any abortion that can accompanied with the features of infection like if the woman is having fever, uh, she has an purulent vaginal discharge and pain along with the abortion then this is to be called as septic abortion which is quite common with the unsafe practices with the illegal type of induced abortion. Now the spontaneous isolated and recurrent is further subcategorized into threatened abortion. First, the threatened abortion means we already receive a threat. That is yes, the process of abortion gets started here. But this is the alone type of abortion where we can continue the pregnancy. We can hold this abortion process. So threat is already being received by any medical practitioner. So they can identify the situation and can uh, stop the process of abortion and continue the pregnancy till term. So threatened abortion, yes, although it is the type of abortion, but here is the clinical entity where we can continue the pregnancy. That is called the threatened abortion. Okay. Second variety is the inevitable, means uncertain, unavoidable, where the progression of abortion started and it won't be stopped and uh, we cannot avoid that it will just terminate the pregnancy anyhow at any cost so that is the inevitable abortion okay unavoidable circumstances next where it is complete abortion where all part of concept has comes out so that's why it is complete nothing left remain in the uterine cavity okay and uh, in incomplete as the name denotes incomplete means partly uh, some tissues comes out and partly it remain inside the uterine cavity still the abortion process is going on incomplete variety and the another variety is the missed abortion where the abortion uh, process started the fetus is dead and it is retained inside the cavity for a variable period of time and it is being missed by any uh, medical persons or even though by a woman itself so it is being missed so that is why called a missed abortion okay sometimes septic abortion can also be there in this classification but septic abortion uh, is most common with the illegal practice but although it can be happened with this all other clinical entity so septic it simply means any type of abortion which accompanied with the sign of infection fever, purulent vaginal discharge and the pain that is called the septic abortion. So these are the classification and the varieties in the abortion. Broadly it is classified into the spontaneous expulsion and induced extraction. Okay. So the comparative study of these all varieties will discuss in the another video. Now we will deal what are the causes behind the abortion. So have a look on the general causes uh, which can lead into the first and second trimester abortion then we'll 
uh, talk about wo what is the most important causes behind first and second trimester so the most common cause in spontaneous abortion is actually the chromosomal abnormality or you can say the genetic factor so chromosomal abnormalities can be because of the change in the number of chromosomes or it can be because of the structural defect of the chromosome so we know the chromosome is the structure that lies within the cell nuclei uh, which is formed by the coiled uh, dna molecule so in our body there is a two set of chromosome that is 46 number of chromosomes are present in our body so there may be a defect in the number of chromosome or there may be a structural defect in chromosome so out of them the most common defect is the numerical defect in chromosome so in this the most common defect is the aneuploidy where there may be a extra number of chromosome or there may be a deficient number of chromosome okay that is called aneuploidy in aneuploidy there is the two condition one is trisomy and the second one is monosomy trisomy it means there is an extra number of chromosome tri means three we know there is a two set of chromosome yes so in each number of chromosome there are two of chromosome okay but instead of two there is three of chromosome so in trisomies uh, there are many type of trisomies like 13 16 18 21 22 so out of them the most common trisomy is 16 in that what happened on the 16 number of chromosome there is three chromosome instead of two there is three that's why trisomy 16 okay so aneuploidy is the most common chromosomal abnormality and in that the most common is the trisomies in trisomies the most common one is the uh, trisomy 16 but the single most specific chromosomal abnormality out of all them is the monosomy x monosomy x where one chromosome is deficient it means we know the normal are the normal number of chromosome is 46 so instead of 46 there is only 45 x one x is missing so that is the monosomy x okay so monosomy x is the most common specific chromosomal abnormality in the aneuploidy and the another numerical defect in the chromosome is the polyploidy where there is an extra set of chromosome is present so although there is two set of chromosome in normal situation yes 2n but instead of 2n there is a 3n or maybe 4n it means there may be a triploidy or maybe triploidy or maybe tetraploidy triploidy where the extra number the extra one set is included in two so there may be three set in triploidy and when tetraploidy is there then there is maybe a extra two set uh, of chromosomes would be there so 2n means 46 chromosome and when one set is added more then it would be 69 chromosomes okay 23 23 23 so this is called the triploidy and when there would be a two more set of chromosome then it would be a tetraploidy that is 23 23 23 23 it means 92 chromosomes so out of them the in polyploidy triploidy is most common and the other structural chromosomal abnormalities include uh, the translocation deletion inversion translocation means the part of chromosome is translocated to the other site uh, deletion in means uh, in that the part of chromosome is deleted it is left okay so these are the structural abnormalities in chromosome but out of all chromosomal abnormalities in genetic factor the most common reason is the aneuploidy it means there is a defect uh, there may be extra number of chromosome or there may be a decrease in the number of chromosome and out of them the monosomy x is the most specific chromosomal abnormality okay and very importantly the chromosomal abnormality or the genetic factor is the most common cause for first trimester spontaneous abortion so as we discussed 
first trimester abortion is quite likely in comparison to the second trimester and in first trimester the most common reason is the chromosomal abnormality which is uncertain that we cannot control on these abnormalities okay this all comes through genetic factor yes the second cause is the metabolic and endocrine disturbances so in endocrine disturbances there would be a luteal phase defect so we know that corpus luteum is the important structure that is uh, responsible for early pregnancy maintenance because the corpus luteum releases releases progesterone progesterone which is responsible for maintenance of pregnancy uh, until the placenta develops and it take over the action of corpus luteum so suppose in earlier weeks if corpus luteum is not releasing sufficient amount of progesterone then the implantation won't be taken place properly the placentation could not be happened properly and that's why the pregnancy continuation won't be possible further okay so corpus luteum or the luteal phase defect is the one reason the hormonal defect and the other metabolic disturbances like overt thyroidism hypo or hyperthyroidism Uh, the uncontrollable diabetes mellitus is also the reason the metabolic reason for the miscarriages and obesity can also be the reason okay so these are the uh, metabolic and endocrine disturbances the third cause behind the abortion is the structural abnormalities the anatomical abnormalities so that could be take place because of the cervical incompetence cervical insufficiency it means the cervix is weak as we know the cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus that actually holds the pregnancy uh, till term okay because the internal os remain closed so suppose what happen if the cervix is weak then without pain the cervix can be dilated progressively in mid trimester and that can expel the fetus out okay so the structural abnormality is most common reason is the most common reason for second trimester abortion that is very important so cervical competency incompetency insufficiency can lead to the second trimester abortion and uh, along with that structural anomalies abnormalities can include the malformation of the uterus congenital birth defect in the uterus so the uterus and the fallopian tube is usually formed by the mullerian ducts fusion of mullerian duct so suppose if any defect is there in the fusion of these duct that can lead to the congenital birth defect in the uterus so there may be a uniconvoluted uterus biconvoluted uterus or septate uterus in form of these defect so in uniconvoluted what happen there may be a complete or partial partially absent one mullerian duct and thereby there may be a one u ut- uh, the uterus which have only one fallopian tube and this uh, uterus is tilted laterally uniconvoluted okay biconvoluted in that what happen the two mullerian ducts are there which is fused at the bottom but at the cranial part they won't be able to fuse so that's why they form two cornuas in the uterus so all together it looks like a heart shape structure in the biconvoluted uterus and in septate uterus what happened the tube fuses together but they form one septa one division in between the uterine cavity so thereby in uterus there is the two cavity in the septate uterus there is a septa or fibrous division in between the cavities okay and the other structural abnormality includes the uterine fibroid uterine leiomyomas uh, which are the non cancerous smooth muscle submucosal tumors that uh, is because of the overgrowth of the muscle and connective tissues so there may be a, a varying size of fibroid or the tumor that lies within this uterine cavity okay leiomyomas and the other structural abnormality include intra uterine adhesion that is cyniki or out of them the most common reason is the asherman syndrome where what happened uh, many scars are formed in the uterine cavity and it is attached with the uh, various structures 
adjacent to this so by this all combined structural anomalies what happened the growing fetus won't be able to met its demand okay because uh, it require more space for the fetus to grow but because of all these structural anomalies what happened the volume of the cavity is not appropriate for the fetus as well as for the placenta to grow more so thereby the vascularity also also decreases yes so because of this all reasons the the fetus won't be able to met all the nutrient uh, as the cavity size is not appropriate so because of that uh, the fetus can the uh, pregnancy can be terminated okay so this is the most important cause for second trimester abortion why the second trimester abortion because in second trimester itself the fetus grows more and more yes because in first trimester the fetus is not that much big to expand but when it enters into the second trimester then it increases more in size so at that time when the space is not more the vascularity is no more then the fetus can terminate yes now the another reason for the abortion the fourth reason is the infection so uh, any infection the viral bacterial or the parasitic infection uh, especially among them the torch is most common reason uh, for the miscarriage torch is the toxoplasmosis rubella cytomegalovirus and the herpes simplex virus so this infection or uh, the, in the other infection that can be include malaria urea plasma uh, chlamydia brucella so any infection that can enter into the system systemic circulation of the woman can reach up to the utero placental bed and enter into the fetal placental unit and that can infect the fetus and uh, compromise the fetus so infection can be the another reason for miscarriage but because of the infection the miscarriages percent is less comparative to the other reasons now the another fifth reason is immunological disturbances or the factors so immunological disturbances include the auto antibodies okay auto antibodies disorder where the body uh, makes antibody against self healthy tissues okay and one of the important example of this autoimmune disorder is the anti phospholipid antibody syndrome so in this syndrome what happened the body forms certain antibodies against body's healthy tissues so the antibodies which are being formed are the lupus anticoagulants the anti cardiolipin antibodies anti beta 2 glycoprotein 1 antibodies so these are the antibodies that actually enters into the systemic circulation and uh, that can directly uh work upon the phospholipid so what happened all together these antibodies initiate the complementary pathway in the blood that can lead into the uh release of local inflammatory mediators like cytokines and interleukins so by the release of these local inflammatory mediator uh there may be a formation of thrombus that is venous thrombo embolism would be there and when the thrombus formation would be there then what happened the blood flow toward the fetus would be hampered okay If blood flow would not be that much adequate and the fetus won't be able to receive all the nutrient and the oxygen from this decreased blood flow okay so because of this immunological disorder there may be a formation of venous thromboembolism and that may cause fetal hypoxia and thereby miscarriage and the another sixth factor for the abortion is the medical disorder in women so if the woman is having hypertensive disorders renal diseases or synoptic heart diseases or maybe hemoglobinopathies so in either of the condition what happened the blood supply toward the fetus is hampered so as we can see in the hemoglobinopathy Uh, there is the most common reason behind this is the sickle cell anemia okay hemoglobinopathy where the production of hemoglobin can be hampered or 
may be the structure of hemoglobin can be disturbed so in sickle cell anemia we can see that there is a destruction of rbc so the rbc is changed into the sickle shaped and when it get changed or destructed in the sickle shaped what it can does it blocks the pathway of blood okay it uh, causes obstruction in blood flow so again the blood supply toward the fetus is uh, disturbed and the fetus won't be able to get proper oxygen okay so thereby the fetal hypoxia could be there and the pregnancy can be terminated so this could be the reason the medical disorder in the woman can lead into the miscarriage and other social and behavioral factors can be the risk factor for miscarriage like if the woman is consuming more alcohol uh, she smoke frequently so this also can causes teratogenic effect in the fetus there may be a congenital anomalies in the fetus that can lead into the miscarriage and certain exposure to radiation lead mercury in the occupational area that can also increases the risk of miscarriages so although we have discussed many reasons that can lead into the miscarriages but there are certain reasons that remain unexplained or undetectable so many many of the time the woman and even though medical practitioner itself remain unknown what was the reason behind this miscarriages so here in this lecture we have discussed with the definition of abortion and the clinical classification of the abortion and the most common reason uh, that can lead into the miscarriages that we have discussed here thank you